Welcome back, everybody, to the Sports Arena. We have a young admirer up here. I'm glad I can inspire young women to want to be on the stage. There we go. So we are moving to the NFC now. If you see, I have changed my shirt into an NFC shirt. I am a not an Eagles fan, but a Malcolm Jenkins fan. So normally we've been going down the line, um, starting from the team that finished first to last. But we're going to go from the bottom up because we have a special guest with us today, Derek Jones from the BucksReport.com. Yep. Hey, everybody All right. Is it TheBucksReport.com or just BucksReport.com? BucksReport.com. BucksReport.com. Yeah. So our friend Derek is up here today. And honestly, the big question right now with the Bucks: how are they going to fare these first three games with Jameis gone? Their first three at New Orleans, home versus Philly, home versus Pittsburgh. Well, uh, I mean, it just – you never want to lose your starting quarterback at, at any time, especially when it's, you know, it's something off the field. But – you know, things happen. It's the NFL. You got to you gotta be prepared for everything, and you spend the off-season getting prepared. Good thing is they had a little advance notice that this was happening, so they have ample amount of time to get ready. I think, uh, you know, the team itself in the off-season did a good job, you know, getting some talent on the defensive side of the ball and surrounding – you know, the, uh, the offense with some good pieces. So, I mean, Fitzgerald, he's a backup quarterback. That's what he is. Patrick. So, yeah. <laughs> he's got a magical beard, I can say that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, the main thing they got to do to compete in these games and get themselves a good chance to win is just go out there and, you know, they got to play defense, obviously. Run the ball, play defense. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to make Fitzgerald do too much. Exactly. Um, he is thrown to some pretty good receivers, though, and Mike Evans and Deshaun Jackson, which had a, a kind of a disappointing year last year. The receivers. How do, how do you think they're going to? Do you think they're going to improve on their year last year? How are they going to play out this season? Well, they, they're going to have to improve for any success with Jameis or you know Fitz. They're going to have to improve. Uh, main thing I feel like is going to be the uh, play calling. You know, play calling is a big thing. You can't just run seam routes and deep routes all the time. Guys need to get into a rhythm. So part of that is on the uh, offensive coordinator, who's, who's ever going to be calling the plays. Just early on in the game, get the quick game going, make the defense come up, have to respect the, the quick hitches and the slants and anything quick. Then you got Jackson and some of those guys that go over the top. So. Well, and even outside of the receivers, they actually have a really good, might be the best tight end group in the league right now with Cameron Bray and O.J. Howard. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, so, I mean, who do you see stepping up in this one? Um, are they going to be equal? Who's going to be the better tight end? Who's going to get the more well, catches, more looks? I like Bray. He's one of those guys just, you know, not super talented, but very smart. And can do anything you ask him to, run block, can get out there in the pass, stretch the field in the middle. And uh, O.J. Howard, young guy, still learning. I, I want to say they could be equal, but, you know, the football person in me says, if you want to really expand your game and get to that next level on the offensive end, O.J. Howard is going to have to be a, a bigger part of the, you know, offensive game. Well, we were talking before the show, and, uh, Ali, you said something about you think O.J. Howard can actually have a big season? Yeah, I honestly think – he should be one of the focal points of that offense. I mean, we saw flashes of him last year when him and him and Winston connected a few times. Um, you know, I think they've kind of overpaid Bray, giving him that six-year extension. Yeah. I honestly think that was kind of a dumb contract move. You know, you drafted O.J. Howard for a reason, and he was the guy to, to take over that tight end position and give Bray a six-year extension. I mean, it's like it kind of scratches my head a little bit. It's going to be interesting going into the first three games. You're going – you know, the first three games are probably the three toughest teams in the league right now. Yeah. So with, with Fitzy under the helm, he may have a magical Leonidas beard, and you think a guy from Harvard would be a smart enough quarterback to make great plays. It's, it's I went into this season with really low, low expectations, and I'm talking real low after last year. Because okay. the, the hype right, train. All right, all right, time out. Let's, let's, no, let's let me cut finish. This. We're not up to your team yet. No, let's no. Cut. Silence. Silence. Hurry up. Silence. <laughs> there are people who want to know some stuff here. Yeah, and I'm about to get there. I went, I, last year, the hype train on me was, was through the roof. I thought this team was going to be you know, the winner of the division. They're going to go far in the, in the playoffs. And it was just. <laughs> that, was, that was the team last year. It was. <laughs> So going into this season, it's low expectations, but, but that's good, though. Oh, yeah. Low expectations is the high ceiling on it. So 
they made so many adjustments on the defense to be a mean defense. When you get guys like JPP coming over and Vinny Curry coming over and, you know, solidifying that offensive line with getting Ryan Jensen as your center, you know, protection around the quarterbacks, whoever it may be, yeah. that shows to me that the organization does care about what's going on and hopefully they're going to improve on this year. It's just – do I see them winning maybe one of those games in the first three before Jameis comes back? Maybe. Yeah. Hopefully it's against the Philadelphia Eagles because I have a bet against Eric. So <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> it's just the, the thing that the big question mark, I think, is going forward with the organization is what are you really going to do with Jameis? When he comes back in week four against the Bears, and if Fitzy does well the first three games, are you going to start Fitzy or are you going to start Winston? And if Winston comes back, is he going to have the mentality is, I'm, I'm, I am the starter of this team. I'm the leader of this team. Am I going to stop doing this stupid kid stuff that I've done in the years past? Am I going to stop being a distraction to this team? Am I going to be a leader of this team? I think it has to start with him and going forward. Derek, is Dirk Cutter on the hot seat this year? He has to be on the hot seat. I mean, you, you look at all the things that, that has went on since he's become the head coach and uh, the, the failure of a season last season and – Everything else that has went on, the qu- the quarterbacks, you know, situation. He has to be on the hot seat because it's, it's scorching hot right now. You ha- you, you, the expectations last season was way up here, and you you went way down here. You go out this off season, you make some changes on the team, you bring in some high profile players on the defensive side. Now the expectations for a lot of people are back up here. You're expecting the defense to make a huge jump. He's put, he's hitched his wagon to uh, Mike Smith. Mike Smith had to come through. If he doesn't come through, and we end up being under 500 and not making the playoffs, he may be safe, but it depends on how they look in that whole process. If they look bad, you got to make a change. If it, if they look good and they competed, they lose some close games. Throughout the season, a field goal, one point, then maybe he can Oh, well, they're going to lose a few by a field goal. The way things look around here. I think it also has to come to if – I really like what they did against the Miami Dolphins. They had Todd Monken actually running the plays instead of Cutter. That's good. I think that's what they should do for yeah. the regular season, even yeah. though Cutter's saying, I'm going to run the offense. Yeah. I, I think he should let go of that, that, that calling and let, it, let Todd yeah. Monken handle the yeah. offensive calls. You know, I hope it doesn't come down to a few kicks, even though, you know, Canizario missed one. But, yeah. you know, this is a team that has should should rise up and do hopefully a little bit better than last yeah. year. I think, you know, for Cutter to keep his job, it's got to be playoffs or busts. It has to be. Well, the problem is, is this the toughest division in the NFL? Yeah, yes, I, definitely. I, I don't know, man. You know, playoffs or busts is a, is a strong, you know, mindset to go by when you sit in a division where you have three teams – that made the playoffs, the, you know, the previous season. So that, that's going to be tough. All, all I'm looking for is some type of progress and just seeing them get better in areas where they failed that last season. And, you know, the defense coordinator got to gotta be better, obviously. What do you think the record is, if you're predicting? Oh, man. Uh, over, uh, over under the wins. Eight. I'm going to go 8-8. Eight eight. I'm going to go 8-8. Eight eight. Eight I just eight. – a safe I'm, bet. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going, going with seven and nine. I don't know. I see a lot of upside to them. I think they could maybe surprise the division, beat out Carolina and Atlanta. I'm, I'm going to go high. Let's go ten wins to the Bucks. Beat Atlanta. Whoa, 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 whoa. We'll whoa. get to your time. Oh, I'm moving on. You to will Atlanta. have your time. So, well, Derek, I want to thank you for joining us today right. and talking appreciate about the Bucks. We appreciate it. it. Appreciate We're here it. every Sunday. If you guys ever want to come out and talk Bucks again, we're All happy right. to have Make you. Make sure to All go right. to BucksReport.com. We've got the crew back there. We've got Keith. We've got Derek. We've got Jay back there as well. Make sure to go to BucksReport.com.